So let's talk about inlet first. Okay, when I t think of an inlet controlled culvert, I think of everything to the left of this line. Okay, it's just the inlet. Okay, the flow capacity is controlled by only three things. So Q, the amount of flow that this culvert can handle is controlled simply by three things. The headwater depth. Okay, as I increase my headwater depth, there's more water that wants to push into this culvert. Okay, so as HW increases, my flow capacity increases. The second thing is the flow area at the inlet. Okay, if I have a boulder here blocking a portion of my inlet, okay, water can only enter a small piece of that culvert. If I remove that boulder, okay, my flow area increases, therefore my flow capacity increases. And number three is the type of inlet edge. Okay, if you just have a pipe sticking out of the ground, okay, the water is going to be hitting this embankment and trying to find its way into the pipe. If you have something that we call wing walls, okay, this is looking into the pipe straight on. Okay, and the water now comes down the channel. The wing wall is just a concrete angled wall. Okay, it hits that wall and is directed nice and smoothly into our pipe as opposed to the pipe just sticking out of the ground. Okay, So the type of inlet edge impacts the flow capacity. Again, everything here to the left of this line. It does not matter. Okay, it does not matter the pipe type. The material, the friction, the length, the slope, the diameter. Okay, nothing about the barrel matters when we talk about inlet control. Okay? The pipe is always partially full. Okay, so if it's partially full, it is an inlet control. It's always partially full. YC or our critical depth occurs at the inlet, so we pass through critical depth at the inlet. And since we pass through critical depth at the inlet, we are in supercritical flow through the culvert. Because okay, we go from sub, we pass through critical depth, and then we're in supercritical flow. Okay, so these are the three characteristics of inlet control. Just a rule of thumb, the culvert barrel slope is usually steep. Okay, there's no definition of what is steep. Okay, but what we're saying here is that you're in supercritical flow. Supercritical flow is usually fast okay, and usually has a steep slope. Outlet control, on the other hand, incorporates your whole entire culvert system. Okay? So the flow capacity for outlet control is, let's look at this third bullet, your headwater depth, your flow area at the inlet, and your type of inlet edge. So that should look familiar. That is the same as inlet controlled. But now we're also... The flow capacity is controlled by the culvert barrel characteristics, the diameter and area, the material and roughness, the slope, the actual barrel or culvert itself. Okay. It's also impacted by the tailwater depth, okay, whether you're submerged or not submerged. Okay. Outlet control is um, full or partially full. Okay. So right away, if the culvert is flowing full, what can you say? And what can you say if the culvert is flowing full? If it says that in a problem statement, right away you should a light bulb should go off and you should be saying, are you in inlet or outlet control? Yes, you are in outlet because inlet is always partially full. Okay. You have now subcritical flow through the culvert. Okay, so again, if the problem statement says you have a culvert and you have subcritical flow, right away you should say outlet control. Okay, more of a conceptual type of problem. And just a rule of thumb, the culvert barrel slope is usually flat or mild. Again, there's no def definition of flat or mild versus steep. But since we're in subcritical flow, okay, we have slow, tranquil flow because that is the definition of subcritical.